Hi everyone, welcome back to the Technicide channel. I am Anisia. In this one, we're looking at the 2021 CSEC physics paper and we're looking at question one. So get your pens, get your papers and come as we go through the question together. Remember to subscribe, like and share the video so that everyone you know who does physics can benefit from this video. Let's go. Okay, so here's question one, part A. State Hooke's Law. Now, remember, once you're dealing with laws, you should state them as is. Don't try to get too creative and try to put things in or just put the law as is. So Hooke's Law. Okay, so as we know, Hooke's Law states that the extension of a spring is proportional to the applied force. And the key thing now, if you only had that, you would have gotten two out of three. To get your full marks, you need to add the part which is critical to Hooke's Law, as long as the elastic limit is not exceeded. And that would give you your three marks right there. So now we're going to B, and I have a surprise for you for B. So this says to determine the spring constant or stiffness. This might be sounding familiar, especially if you follow along with my channel. A student placed different masses, M, on a hanger that was attached to a spring and recorded the length, L, of the spring. Table 1 shows the mass and corresponding values of length. Now, like I said, if you follow my channel, you would recognize that we have covered this one already also. So this is the table from the previous video I did and I'm going to link it in the i cards as well as in the description below. So we completed this table already and so we've done B1 for four marks and of course we know we got our four marks. Then now our next question says that we should use the grid to plot a graph of extension versus force. And of course, like I said, I'm going to be linking it so that you can go ahead. If you have done this question already, go and complete these questions and then you can jump right back into this one as we finish up the question. The next part now asking us about gradient. We've also done this and this is a little insert from my video. Go and check it out. And so now this is the last part we would have done of the question. But before I jump into the next part of the question, I want to highlight something that is common for question one. Now, I'm going to highlight this aspect right here. It's common for question one for them to give you a letter to use for a gradient. And that letter is not just some arbitrary letter they decide to use very often that letter is linked to the preceding question or it's linked to the quantity that the gradient represents yes so you have to pay attention to that letter it's good to be mindful of this question when they're asking you for gradient and the letter they give you so that if it comes to the next question and they want you and they want you to substitute this value in a formula, for example, you are able to do so and you're not becoming confused. So that is one of the key things I want to point out in this one. So let's go to the next question because like I said, we've done this. You can check it and then come right back. All right, so here we go again. Here we have a perfect example. Given the gradient S, is equal to 1 over k, calculate the spring constant k. As I said earlier, you have to be mindful of the gradient and the letter that is used to represent the gradient. So now they want us to calculate the spring constant k. Now, the question gave you a little bit of clue as to what the spring constant is, just in case you don't remember, it's the stiffness of the spring. So they want you to calculate that. That's three marks. Now, remember, your three marks are usually broken down. One for the formula, one for the correct substitution, 
and one for the correct answer with the correct units. That is important. So I'm going to be calculating this and showing you how your points are broken down. All right, so that's the unit now for our gradient and we are to plug that into the formula. So we have S would be equal to one over K. And if you did not check my transposition video, you need to go ahead and check that because now I'm going to be transposing this. Multiplying both sides by K because it's in denominator and I want it in numerator. So I have S times K equal to one. You got to keep the one. Now I divide by S. And as I've taught my students, when you have equations of this nature, S equals one over K. When you have it in this nature, it's a quantity on the left equal to one over another quantity. And you want to make the quantity in the denominator, the subject of the equation. You just simply exchange the position of the two quantities. So it's simply K is equal to one over S. So you just exchange the positions of the quantities. Very easy way to transpose. Okay, so now I'm going to be substituting in my formula. So let me write the formula again so that you get the points going down. 1 over S, this is one mark. So K is equal to 1 divided by 4.5 centimeters per newton. And it's important that you have the correct units substituted. And that is our second mark. And here's our third mark. Now that's the numerical aspect of the answer. I hope that the unit part will not be confusing, but let's work through it together. If you recall the concepts of laws of indices or anything of the sort, then let's use that to get what the unit will be when we would say flip it. So we have one rule to remember. Once you have a quantity or a constant, a number, it doesn't have, once it doesn't have a power, we can always assign the power one to it. Because we know that any number, any constant, any variable raised to the first power gives you back the same thing. So I'm going to be putting centimeters here to the first power and we have newtons to the negative one. Now, according to the law of indices, and I'm going to just put it to the side. If you have one over X, and I'm going to be putting it to the first power, that's equal to X to the negative one. So basically what we do is we invert the index of the number that is raised to a power. So in this case, once we're going from denominator, so in this case, once we're going from denominator to numerator, because yes, this is now in a numerator position, we simply use the opposite sign of whatever was in front of the power. So in this example, it was one divided by X to the first power. And so we're going to put X now to the negative one. Let me give you another example. If I had one divided by five to the negative two, that would be equal to five. Remember what I said, I've now moved it from denominator to numerator. So what am I going to do? Change the power, the sign of the power to the opposite sign. So that would be squared. Okay, one final example. Let's look at another one. If we had three to the fourth power, three to the fourth power, and now we're gonna do putting it in the denominator position. It's the same as one divided by three. And remember four is positive, so now we need to make it negative. And that's the concept. So now I hope this little example that I've just done 
will help you to figure out the unit for this answer. So I'm moving centimeter to the first power to numerator. So what will I have? Centimeter negative one. Yes. Newton n to the negative one is moved to numerator. So it becomes n to the positive one, which is the same as just having n by itself. So the way we normally record units is to have the positives first followed by the negatives in terms of the units with index or powers. So that would be Newton per centimeter. And that would be your answer. So right here now, putting it over here so it doesn't get confused. This now would be your third mark. Your, your answer with the correct unit. And that would give you three out of three for this question. Hope you all got it. Now let's move to the next question. And this is the final one for this question. Another thing I want you to note, question one of the CSEC paper usually is worth 25 marks. And it's one of those questions that you can, that you need to try to maximize as much of the 25 marks as possible so that it can help you to get a good result at the end of your exam. So now this question says, given that F is equal to K times E, force is equal to spring constant times extension. That's what those letters stand for. So F is force, applied force, K is spring constant, E extension. Calculate the length when a force of eight newtons is applied. Assume that the spring obeys Hooke's law. So let's take a little breather. The spring obeys Hooke's law. What does that mean? It simply means that the spring has not exceeded its elastic limit one. It also means that the extension of the spring is proportional to the force that's applied to it. So those are the two things that that statement means. So let's go now. They want us to calculate the length. That's what they want in this question. And they told us that the force is eight newtons. Now, something is missing. Because for us to calculate the length, we're gonna need original length of the spring. So let's now go back to our first question and see if we can capture that. So this now is taking us back to this table to get the original length. Now, if you remember from the first video, I said the original length would be the length of the spring when no force is added. So looking at this top line of the table, you see that the mass added is zero. The force naturally would be zero. The extension is zero. So that simply means that nothing is added to the spring. So the original length of the spring is 70.2. That's what that simply means. Now let's get back to the question. So remember, original length is 70.2 centimeters. Okay, so let's record what we have now. So I'm going to put OL for original length, 70.2 centimeters. We know the force. That's 8.0 newtons. We know the spring constant too. Remember, we just calculated that. And that's another thing. Questions, the previous questions usually will be necessary for the questions that follow. So that was 0 0.22 newtons per centimeter. We just calculated that. Okay, good. So if you think about it for Hooke's law, we're dealing with a spring. We're saying an, a force is applied to it and it extends. So we need to know the extension before we can calculate the length. And when they say calculate the length, notice they said when a force is applied. So naturally they are not talking about the original length. They want the new length. So let's now first calculate the extension and then now we will be adding that to the original length to get that new length. So again, we're gonna transpose our formula.
And of course, again, that's my first mark. Getting my formula down pat. So I'm just going to substitute now. Now, of course, I always tell my students, put your units in your equations. Why? It helps you to get a better picture of what you're doing and you'll then be able to determine the units right off the bat. And this extension is 36.36. Now, as I just explained, we're taking this unit per centimeter from a denominator position to a numerator position in the answer here. So, just as I just explained, it has a negative power now, so when you write it as a numerator, it gets a excellent positive power for the index. So we get centimeter to the positive one. But we can do a little bit of rounding off. So we get 36 centimeters to so the first power is not necessary, but I'm just putting it there so you can follow. That's not the full answer. The full answer is asking us for the length. So now, new length is equal to original length plus extension. So original length was 70.2 plus 36 centimeters. Notice both units are the same, so we can work with it. So our new length is 106.2. And of course, that unit would be centimeters. And that will wrap up this question. So for this question, the scoring is going to be a little bit different. They may or may not give you a mark for the formula, but still put your formula because we're not sure how they're going to score it. They will definitely give you a mark for substituting and getting your answer. And then they'll definitely give you a mark for getting the correct answer with the unit. And so that there would round up how you would get your marks for this question, which is a maximum of three marks. All right, we did it. Thank you guys for joining. I really hope that you understood the concepts in the video. Shoot me up a message in the chat so that I can know whether or not you understood the concepts, if there's anything else you want me to go through, and I'll be sure to hook you up with a video. Remember to subscribe, like, and share the video. Sharing is caring. And then come and catch me on the next video. Please remember to subscribe. Very important, get those subscriptions. Target for now is 500. So let's get those subscriptions up to 500. There's more to come when we get there. Bye for now.